Okay. <laughs> you have to learn English. Okay, everybody. Good morning, everybody. We're going to um, start the chitas of the day. A second. Oops. I'm just to read this. Okay. We're going to go to uh, the chitas of the day. A long day, but okay. We're holding the portion of Tzav, and we are holding we're holding the um, chapter six, verse number twelve, the ninth day of Nisan. This is the sacrifice for Aaron and his sons. Which will bring to, the, to, to God in the day that he is anointed. He's going to bring a, a one-tenth of an eifa of flour. Soilus, mincha mincha tamid, a a fine flour perpetual meal offering. Machzis ba beker or machzis ba erev, half in the morning and half in the evening. And as she says, an ordinary curry must also. However, I'm sorry, I froze. I, uh, however, uh, a Koyan Godel, however, must bring this offering every day, as it says, a perpetual meal offering. The Koyan who is anointed instead of in from amongst his sons as an eternal stature. So a Koyan Godel needs to bring this offering every single day. Verse 14, she made an oil, in a shallow pan. Peyase. You have to bring it scolding and repeat it baked. To Nufe, to Nufia, Minchas Pitim. He shall offer the mirror of broken pieces. Rashi says, what does that mean? Scolding, boiling water is poured over it, over the dough, until it's thoroughly scalding. Kithini means baked many times over, namely after the scalding. He bakes it in an oven and afterward he fries it in a shallow pan. Minchas pitim, this is teaches that requires breaking up. And old Rashi, this is contains not only bake, breaking offering into separate pieces and crumbs, since it's not scoop. He folds it into two and folds it again into four. These are soft chalas. These are soft matzahs. Vertically and then horizontally. However, he does not separate into pieces. It, it, it is this form. He burns it in the, as an offering. I'm going to show you a picture. So we'll be able to get a, another, a, a, a little understanding in it. Let me see if I got the right picture. So you see this picture that so this is preparing Menucha is a mach mafis tana. This is what you, 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 this is the way you do it. Second, let's see if I can find another picture. So these are the first things that we do. One is some oil, fine flour, and lukewarm water is added in the flour and, and the dough is kneaded. Number three, it's mixed up. The remaining oil is poured on the mincha. And then some dough, some more oil is mixed into the dough, number four. Number five, the dough is divided into 10 loaves. And then you see how the dough is crumbled. It's like folded. Number six, the dough is folded. The, day, the remaining oil, 
Amincha is a meal offering. Maheshes is in a deep pan. That's a picture of a deep pan. So that's the basic mincha. So this is the way they made a tanner. Number six is the tanner, is the one with the tanner. That is, so you see that, that's the way the difference was made. The way the loaves were crumbled, number seven, the way the roll, the wafers were crumbled. Because all of this was matza, Latin matza. Let me see if I can find another diagram that I, that I took down. So that we saw already. See this is, you see you see over here, boiling water is poured over the dough, cooking it. You see that? So it's cooked. It was first brought boiling water. We just mentioned in, we just mentioned part number four. Number five, the dough was divided into loaves, and then it was baked in the oven. Or the loaves, the loaves are fried in the remaining oil in the frying pan. So this you see the way it's baked again. It's first broiled in water. That's number four. Number five, it's separated into pieces. Number six, it's baked in the oven. Number seven, it's fried on a frying pan. Okay, that's so you see all these things, all the, the different uh, this, uh, the different things that were done on a mincha. And a mincha. Verse number nine, number fifteen. My kohen Mashiach tato and the kohen anointed instead of him from amongst his, his sons shall prepare it. It's a eternal statue to God. Kolil tiktor had to be totally brought to mizbeach and totally consumed on mizbeach. Rashi says. This is to be understood as, as uh, to be transposed. The Kayan who is anointed from among his sons, instead of him, every Kayan God all needs to do that. Verse number 16. Every meal offering, a mincha is a meal offering of a Kayan of a Kayan. It's the Kayan shall be completely burnt. It's not eaten by anybody. It's not eaten. It's a regular mincha that was bought by a Jew. The coin ate most of it, only took a kamitza, a little, a little hand, a hand uh, out of it, a fist out of it, a handful out of it. But uh, this, this, this mincha, this meal offering was totally consumed on the mizbeach. Verse 17. God spoke to Moses, saying, Speak to Aaron and his sons, you should tell them. This is the law of a sin offering. The Makkah Shadisha Ayla Tishahat is the place where you sort of the 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 Ayla, the burnt offering, you shall do the sin offering. Now Hashem before God, Kodesh Kadosh me, this sacrifice is called holy of holies. And then you're gonna see as you listen to the Torah, there's some sacrifices that are called holy of holies. There's some sacrifices that are called holy, and there are different laws to each of these sacrifices. Verse 19. He said, the coin who offers it. He has to eat a b'makam kodesh in a holy place. So, number one, you'll see right away that a, a, a sacrifice that's considered holy of holies needs to be brought, needs to be eaten in the base of the Mikdash, in the, in, in the chatzah, in the courtyard of the base of the Mikdash. And as she says, the machta isa eva evidea she nasa chatzah sayode means the coin who does the the service. Any coin fit for the service, this comes to exclude a coin who is unclean at the time of the dashing of the blood, who does not take care, take share in the flesh. It's impossible to say that the verse prohibits other kaihanim for eating, as I mentioned before, that other kaihanim that have a that have a blemish, they can't do the service, they are allowed to eat from the sacrifice. Only some a coin who is impure. Verse number 20. Whoever touches the flesh shall become holy. And if any blood will sprinkle on the garment, upon which it is sprinkled, he shall wash in the holy place. And can you imagine that since they were doing the sacrificial offerings in the, in the temple, blood splattered all on them. 
And the Torah is telling us he basically can just take this out, can walk out with this garment once blood of the sacrifice was sprinkled on their clothes. The Rashi says, what does it mean any who touches its flesh? Any item of food that touches it and absorbed from it becomes holy. Yiddush, it comes like it insofar as the sin offering is invalid. It is it. Whatever touches the sin offering becomes invalid. And if that sin offering is valid, whatever touches the sin offering must be eaten under the same stringencies as the sin offering. Rashi says, Usually, and what will be sprinkled, which would mean that the blood must be sprinkled in the garment. Therefore, Rashi remarks, Ashe is mean if, the verse says, and if some blood is sprinkled on the garment, you have to sprinkle blood on a garment. And this is the garment which is sprinkled, which shall be washed within the court of the temple. And as I told you, they had in the, in the, in the base of Middash, I don't know exactly what they had in the Mishkan, but in the base of Middash, there was a place where they did all the clothes of the Koyin Gadol and on the clothes of the Koyhanim. They, they, before they left the, 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 the base of Middash, they gave their garments that they wore. It was taken care for them, cleansed, put away, and they would come the next day and they would have fresh new garments. Asher Yazeh, Asher says Yazeh, the passive form of having meaning to be sprinkled. Verse 21, and an earthen vessel, which is cooked, when you take a, when you, you cook the, the sacrifice in an earthen vessel, Yishave, it shall be broken. If it was cooked in a copper vessel, it needs to be purged and rinsed in water. So this is a little bit, you learn the laws of kashas, that a, an earthen vessel cannot be koshered. It needs to be broken, thrown away. And a, like a, like a chinaware. And, a, and a, a metal vessel can be purged. The Rashi says, because the absorption of absorbed the vessel became noisa. Problem is, that means they had a lot of earthen vessels in, in the base of Midrash. Because after the, they used to cook in these vessels, the food, or it's the hot, is to come, is to, if, you get, if they ate the food hot, so the vessel absorbs some of the, 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 of, the of the sacrifice. And, and, and the sacrifice had to be eaten by some sacrifices only, only one day. So now everything that's absorbed in, 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 the, in, this, in, this, uh, in this vessel is nicer, it's leftovers, so you're not allowed to leave over. So if it's an earthen vessel, you have to destroy it. If it's, if it's a metal vessel, you have to cash it. So that's what it means to be purged, the expression of steaming in the same root. Is, so that how do you purge something, a metal vessel that hot water that was cooked with, like in metal pot today, how do you cash it? By dipping into boiling water. How do you cash an uh, 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 earthen vessel? You can't cash it. So that's the difference. Here you have the law. So that's what the situation. So if they use earthen vessels, it was destroyed. If it was used, it was it, it, it was used, and there was a certain place in the base of Midrash where they buried all these earthen vessels. But they had a lot of them. There were a lot of sacrifices. So now she says, purged and rinsed to expression of, of its to expel its absorption. This is the case of metal vessel. But earthenware vessel, the scripture teaches us here, it requires to be broken. It never rids itself of its defect. So therefore, we cannot kasher um, any chinaware. For example, the only way you can catch a china wear is by putting it in a kiln, maybe. But you cannot catch a china wear. Verse 22. All male among the kihanim will eat it. Kodesh Kodoshim he achatas is a holy oath. So that's the other way. Why did Terry say it again? All the sons of the kihanim eat it. From here we learn that the Kayan who offers it up. As a sin burnter shall eat it, stated above, does not come to exclude all kehanim, but exclude one who is unfit to offer up the sin offering. Verse number 20. Any sin offering that's brought, that whose blood is brought into the tent of meeting, to atone the holy, the holy, in the holy. shall not be eaten, it shall be burnt by fire. Rashi, what does it teach us? Because you eat Karmachat, that's part of it. 
The Tzavta teacher, this verse teaches us that if one brings any of the blood of a sin offering to be sacrificed on the outer altar inside the holy, then the sacrifice becomes invalid. And it is seemingly a superfluous word. It includes all other holy sacrifices are wrong in the wrong place because you don't bring the uh, chatas, a regular sin offering is not, the blood is not brought into the base amigdash, only a koyin that sins on the Yom Kippur, it's sprinkled on the on the curtain of, I mentioned yesterday, it's sprinkled on the curtain of the base uh, not last, last week, sprinkled on the curtain of the uh, of the Holy of Holies. But if you did that to a regular chatas, by mistake, the, the koyin made a mistake, he invalidates the chatas, Hatas has to be burned. Faith that is Ashen, Kreda Kedoshim, also this is the laws of a guilt offering, it's holy of holies. And as she says, it's a, it, it shall be sacrificed, but an animal substitute for it may not be sacrificed, rather it remains in the pasture until it becomes defected and redeemed. So we're going to ask, we're going to learn a lot of those laws of, of a, a substitute. By mistake, you, 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 you lost the animal, by mistake, you changed the animal. By mistake, the animal became uh, defective. What do you do with an animal that you that you you uh, you sanctified? Verse number two. The place you, you bring the guilt off the is the asham. This is a a is a chatas in the asham. Um, there's a uh, chatas. If I know it did a sin asham, usually is if I don't know, I just feel I, I'm not sure. As dummy is a gamas bears, and it's also a guilt offering. And his blood shall be poured dashed upon the altar outside. So as she says, the word yichatu is plural. Scripture here seemingly come to describe many slaughters. It has included the case of communal guilt offer offering, which is many slaughtered, the slaughter of many, because it's a community guilt offer. I mean, since we do not find a case of communal guilt offering mentioned in the scripture. The verse is understood somewhat differently. It's used in a plural pronoun. And it links the guilt offering with the burnt offering. Or to have the case of a communal sacrifice. In order to include also the communal burnt offering in the requirements that it choose to be slaughtered in the northern sector of the holy temple courtyard, thus as required an individual burnt offering. Ashi has mentioned by the Marshal, the Vomit, Shlaimer quoted, it's the rest of his interpretation. Verse number three and all its fats you shall bring, offer, you shall offer from it the tail, the fat covering the innards. Nash says, until here, the sacrificial parts of the guilt offering had not yet been. Explain. This is why the Torah tells us here. However, the sacrificial parts of a sin offering have already been explained in, in the portion last week, portion of Yikra. That's why sacrifice parts are not delineated in this section describing the law of the sin offering because you should know it already from last week. So Alia, in this case, the peace offering, the Torah treats a sheep and a goat offering two separate entities. By specifying it's, it's uh, the, the sacrificial procedure for each one separately. Why then is the distinction made between sheep and a goat in the case of a guilt offering? Since for a guilt offering, only a ram or a lamb was maybe brought, and a ram and a lamb are included in the category of those animals whose tail is one of the sacrificial parts. So a ram and a goat and an animal and, and, and a sheep have a tail. Alia is actually officially supposed to be the best part of the animal. Verse number four. Stay a close with the chela shalem, you take the two kidneys. The fat sits upon the kidneys. Al shalak solemn that's on the flanks. Al shalak solemn covered in the diaphragm with the liver. Al shalak with the kidneys, he shall remove. The hikta is solemn is becha, and he brings it upon the altar. Ishil Hashem, it's a it's a fire to God, Asham who it's a guilt offering. That says Asham who, meaning it's a guilt offering until its name is removed by, by, by sending it out to passion. This teaches us, consider a guilt offering whose owner had died. 
or whose owner had lost the original animal and subsequently received atonement through another animal. Although it, the original guilt offering animal, stands ready that its value in money used for another animal, which is to be offered up as an as a sky, meaning a burnt offering which provisions for the altar. Nevertheless, if the original guilt offering slaughtered, if it had been done before they are sent out to pasture, so then it's a whole different law. And that's what the Torah comes to tell us here. So this is again the, the laws concerning if I make a guilt offering, I lose it. I lost it. I couldn't find that this, this offer. I couldn't find the sheep. He ran away. And then I, 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 I substitute another one. And then I find it. That's why you have to be very careful when you, uh, when you bring these offerings to make sure to, uh, to know exactly which animal you, you have and which animal you're going to use. So all these are brought down the Gemara. You learn from all these extra expressions in the Torah. Verse, you can see, because the Torah says it again. So everything tells us something. You have to learn the Gemara, really, to go into every Pasuk, what every Pasuk comes to tell us. Verse number six. So we said this already before. So every country comes to teach us. Any male amongst the Ghana may eat it. Um, the mark and prejudice in a holy place, who this is a sin offering, so it's holy of holies. So that's what actually says. It's already been stated. This is all expounded to his canon. You need to go and learn the Gemara to know exactly what each and every verse comes to teach. In essence, actually, we start bringing down the explanation every verse. We'll be sitting here for a couple of days. First, I said. It's like a, like a, the sin offering. So is the guilt offering. There's one law to the Koyin who, who brings the atonement, the sacrifice will belong to him, and he's allowed to eat from it. So again, Torah tells the Badova said that the Koyin, that can bring part of the sacrifices. They have the right to eat it. Comes to exclude somebody who's impure. Verse number eight. A coin who brings an offering of a burnt offering for a person. The skin of the burnt offering. The skin of the offering belongs to him. So that means the Kehanim had a lot of skin. As we brought down, they had a lot of skin. Skin. And they uh, used to sell it for, uh, you know, to use in the holy things. So these days, this was a major thing for them, that they had all these skins that they can basically then use for holy things. Verse number nine. Every meal offering that's brought in the oven Every, any meal offering that's done in a deep pan, the chomachvas or the shallow pan, like koyin amak, again, the Torah tells us, the koyin who brings it, it's his mincha, means the kahanim who bring it. That's what it actually says. You think that it means only for the koyin that actually brought it? It means the kahanim that were there at that day in the Beis Hamikdash, they all shared in all the minchas. And in all the things that were brought by the Jews, they were shared by the Kehanim. So they had a lot of Baruch Hashem matzah to eat every day, and they had a lot of meat to eat. There's no milk mix in the Beit Samidosh. They had a lot of, they ate a lot of meat. Verse number 10, and any meal offering mixed with oil or dry, shall belong to all the sons of Adam, one like the other. So that's a Belul Hashem wants to come to teach us. This is a voluntary donated meal offering. Bechareva, what is the old dry? This is a sinner's meal offering. The meal offering, jealous jealousy, which is a is a, the, not, another whole which we, we're gonna we're gonna learn the meal offering of a jealous man, a husband, which is the laws of a saita, which also needs to bring a meal offering, which was dry and had no shaman and had no oil.
a whole different meal off. And that completes the Chumash of the day. We're going to go to the Tanya of the day. Today is the ninth day of Nisan. So, we've been learning a little of Kabbalah these days. And this is a chapter 39 of Tanya. We are holding in the middle where there is a third part of the chapter 39. Having explained that Bria is the abode of the souls that serve God with intellect, love, and fear. And Yitzira are the souls that serve him with natural love and fear. After that, we will now discuss the divine service of those souls who are bold in the world of Atzillus. Right? We know what happens to the souls of Bria. We know what happens to the souls of what happened, what, what are the souls in, in Atzillus. The quality of their divine service, he explains, surpasses even that of the intellectual love of fear. It goes higher than those who serve God with love of fear intellectually. Quality of the is this is the level of those tzaddikim who become virtually chariots. This is the level of a tzaddik gomer. A tzaddik gomer will reach to the to the to the to the Ganeden of Attilus. They will have, they will not, they, they will have, they will, they have no will save his will. And the very act testifies that there are other self nullification before him. That's a tzaddik gama. That's it, that's what the, the Tanya continues. The world of emanation. Which is higher than the world of, of creation, which is which which is the world of creation is the world of, of intellect. It's the world of the shama. But we're going to the fifth and the fourth and fifth level of the soul, the chaya and yechida of the nefesh, the life and the oneness of the soul, and that is in the world of the, of emanation, the world of activities. Because the neshama of the soul is the world of intellect. In God, over there, it's united with him in perfect unity. With a profound and wonderful unity, in an infinitely superior to the unity found in the world of Bria. For there, in the Elam Habria, they descended to illuminate only to a restricted degree. Chabad of Atzilus, referred to as Chabad of Ein Seif, radiates in Bria only after the life was contracted. In Atzilus, the, it's, it's, the, it's, it's the light that's above comprehension. So, Bria... Is, a, is, a, is, a, is with a world where the, the comprehension is much greater than understood. And therefore, all the Torah that we learn with our Seichel reaches up to the world of Bria. We would have a total connection to God, like we were chariots of the Abishta, that we did more than we comprehended. We did above our comprehension. Our, our whole, whole essence was connected to God in every aspect of our life not because we comprehended, not because we understood, even though we, we reached up to the levels of understanding, the highest levels of understanding, we still had, as David HaMelech said, nafshi, my soul is thirsting for you. There you reach up to the level of the world of Atzimus. Because in the world of Bria, it's still a contraction. Because in the world of Bria, already, the human being comprehends. That's where we understand our Torah from the world of Bria. That's where the tzaddik even understands his Torah from the world of Bria. The, the tzaddik has the capability to reach up even higher than the world of Bria. Made in Hashem, love, 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 in the world of Bria. So that Silas, the world of emanation, has to contract itself so that it be able that a human being to come into the world of, 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 of creation so that the human being's brain can comprehend God. According to the extent of the intellect, the finite intellect of human beings, 
chain balik vul v'tapas, which created being, which the capable of understanding. Shlo yivatlu b'mitziyusam so that it wouldn't become to achieve the purpose. A contraction of chabad of atzilus was necessary, lest they, the created beings of bria, dissolve out of existence. Now, as they furthermore cease to exist, altogether exist as created beings, reverted instead to their source root, namely God itself. So that's why between the world of Atsilas, that's why it's explained in Kabbalah that Briya, Yitzir, and Asiya, these three lower levels, the world, the world of creation, the world of formation, and the world of action are said in Shtaushas. They are like step by step, one connected to the other. But going from the world of emanation to the world of creation is a leap. There's a, an unbelievable contraction between the world of, of, of Atsilas and the world of, of, uh, of, uh, of, of Briya. That's why the Alter Rebbe, in the beginning of Tanya, explains that at Tzaddik, the difference, there's so many levels of Tzaddik in it. And the difference between a Tzaddik Gomer and a Tzaddik She'en Gomer is a great, vast difference. So even at, between a, a, a complete Tzaddik and a, and a regular Tzaddik, there's a there's a there's like no comparison between the two. A tzaddik gomer has no evil. He's totally nullified to God. That's how the time explained the tzaddik gomer complete tzaddik. A tzaddik she'en a gomer, he's righteous, but he still has a concept of evil. That's why a tzaddik, a tzaddik can reach up to the world of bria, because he his service to God of love of God is based on his intellect. Tzaddik gomer. Has reached up to the world of Atsilas. And he is totally a macabre of the age. He's totally a chariot of God. His whole will, his whole desire is but God, because he's killed, as, as the Gemara says, Dabra Melachas says, I killed my Yetzirah too fast. He kills his evil inclination. Imagine such a thing. So, that's why between Atsilas, the world of Atsilas, and the world of Bria, you have a great contraction. So that's why the Alter Rebbe said, this contraction, that's how it's possible through this contraction that in the world of Bria, we can have a comprehension. We all can comprehend to the world of Bria. That's why it says, we mentioned before, that even a regular Jew on Shabbos will go up to the world of Bria. Because since in the world of Bria is the capability of godly comprehension, to every person to his capability, that's why every one of us, even if we're not totally righteous, we will all, we will all on Shabbos and Nesh Chedesh have a elevation to the world of Bria. Again, in essence, everything you do today happens, will happen, whether in Gan Eden or the world to come. So today we live the week, and on Shabbos we go higher. So too, in Gan Eden or in the world to come, on Shabbos we'll always go higher. Shabbos is holy. Shabbos, we reach up to the world of Bria. But that's the highest we'll reach, is to the world of Bria. Cannot, however, apprehend the Chabad as they are in the undimmed intensity of the world of Atsilas. I'll tell you the story in the Gemara that there was a, a great Tana who wanted to go into the cultural of Abshima Yechoy. And they said, no, 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 to this portal, we can't come into it. So even Gan Eden, this Sadiq, Anna wanted to go into a high, wanted to go into the portal of Damshim Bayachai. He couldn't get into it because it's just too intense, intense light. Over there, the light shines above Seichel, and even the soul, the way he's in Lamaila, will not be able to receive this light. Therefore, it's impossible for human comprehension to be able to receive it. 
So even though he, he is, he's a soul right now, he's not, he's not a physical body, but he still has a soul. As he mentioned before, a soul has its own entity. Not that we think and we have comprehension in our body because we have a soul. So the body, the soul fits the body. The, my soul fits my intellect. Like everything in my soul fits every part of my physical body. Now, if I'm, if I'm sick, that's when my soul is something, is a, is a miscommunication between my soul and my body. I'd be too much light. So that's, that's the Rechain less mashava tisve klau, shom klau. Therefore, there's no thought that can grasp there at all. The thought of intellectual and creative being in Bria can in no way grasp the light of the rays of Atzilus. For this reason, the world of Atzilus is the boat of really great Atzilus. Because it's those tzaddikim that in their lifetime, they reached up to a level of being totally bottled to God. Because their service to God is far superior even to the fear and love derived from understanding and knowing of his greatness. Their service in this world whole different level. The service is totally given over to God. And you can see it in the way they serve the Kaddish Baruch. Total nullified to God. Like the Jewish people saw Meshul Abedin. Total nullified to God. Just as the will of Atzilus. Transcend by far the level of understanding and knowledge of a creative being and intellect. The service is rather on the level of actual charity. They are bottled to God. Like Avraham Avinu, Neich am dust. Yaakov Avinu says, I'm nothing. It's all about God. I'm nothing. It's all about my service. It has nothing to do with me. How they came through their service to God. Dead of Shamra. As we said, I just always always say them a cover. Patriarchs, they themselves pants a divine chariot. I don't should kill your maim, he's a zeis of a dozen. But that's what the right of the patriarchs coined the statement. Abraham Abinu said he named it. David said it. God said something to Abraham. Abraham said, Here I am. David, God said, Take even take your son to say, the Yashka of Abraka. No questions asked. No questions asked. That's an unbelievable service. That is bitter. And the truth is, that is that takes time. Avraham Avinu took time. Moshe Rabbeinu to everyone. And Dovra Melech. Sadiqim is also a process. It's also a process. But they have, they have the capability to reach up to that kind of a level. But whose souls, 99% of us are these kind of souls. Whose soul's root is too limited capacity for this perfect service. You're not capable. Maybe you're capable who's listening over here, but I'm not capable of this. So that the service of Torah and Mitzvah constantly nullified and observed in life. And over here the word is important. Bikfias continuously. Because we are bitter. I wouldn't say that we that nobody in their life has nullification, they, they're given over. The word is continuously. But Sadi Gummer doesn't have the eight So he's continuously. There's no interruptions. It's a continuous, there's no vacation to touch a person. He is continuously involved. That's the trick. We all have the capability of bittal, nullification, to nullify itself, whether it's for a moment or for a short time. We all have that capacity. And we all do that. We nullify ourselves. But the, there's missing one thing, and that's con continuity. And that is a concept of continuous. Why? Because we fall back into our pattern. We have a moment of insanity. That's what we call it to us. Insanity. We go above our intellect and we do things above comprehension. 
And then we go back to our brains. We go back to our comprehension. We fall back into our normal day-to-day -day routine. Sadik is a chariot. Chariot doesn't become unchariot in, 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 in a half an hour. He continues to be that chariot. Continues to be, to be that complete nullified entity. That's what he says. From time to time. Therefore, he can, he can attain that state. Only intermittently, time to time, divine favor from above, he has that moment. Maybe to Hashem and Esa, a Jew can accomplish that every day by davening. The Alter Rebbe says when he davens Shmon Esra, because if you know the ladder of davening, Shmon Esra, you're supposed to reach up to the world of Atzilus. That's why we stand, Shmon Esra, standing with our feet together. It's silent, total quietness, total oneness. Nothing is supposed to bother you around you, what's happening. It's totally supposed to be transfixed in the prayer. And that's the world of Atsilis. So every day we can get however long it takes you to take Shimon Astray, you can actually attain Gitl. That's what you should attain every day in Davani. Especially when you bow down in those times. You bow down. Any kind of bowing. The person bows to God, that's Atsilis. That's the concept of Atsilis. Nullification. Which caused to be its time, Gabal, that's the concept of Atsilis, is nullification. Anachmi, a bow down. The Indian, I'll be to be a spot, will use the is coming close, Mamma. It's for embodied the idea of self nullification, bowing down in Shmon Esser, in the prayer, in God's light, to be accounted as absolute nothing before it. Even at, but ultimately, even at that moment that you have a moment of, of nullification, where are you standing in the oil of Abriya? You still, your soul is still in the oil of Abriya. And it nullifies itself. It gives a little, it gives a little dip into the oil of Matsilis. But the root, your soul is still in the oil of Matsilis. In the oil of Abriya. You're still in the world of creation. But you're dipping in to the world of emanation. Sadiq Gomer is in the world of emanation. He's not, he's not like pushing his head in there. He's totally in there. At that time, he's still, uh, in any event, at that time, the principal abode of his soul, the highest his soul can go, is in Olam Habriya. Even if he's a Tzadik, if he's not a Tzadik Gomer, he's not like a Makava, like the patriarchs, then his soul cannot reach up to the world of Atzilus. Rakim Beis Rotzim, the Mount Rebbe puts in parentheses, there are times God can allow your soul to go in Elam Atzilus. It's up to him, it's good to be king. Only on occasion at times of divine favor will his soul rise to Atzilus as feminine waters, as it's known in the students of Abba. I don't know about it, so I'm not a student of Kabbalah, and I can't tell you when that happens. That ends the Tanya of the day. What a beautiful, such beautiful Tanyas, such beautiful teaching of Tanyas these days. Beautiful. Today is the uh, ninth day of the month of uh, Nisan. Pesach is coming very close. So, my friends, the Tillam of the day is chapter 49, 50, 51, 52, 53, 54. So 49 to 54, and you would have done Kitas of Day. I wish you all a wonderful, happy, and healthy day. God bless you all. See you tomorrow at 8 a.m. for Kitas of the Day. Thank you, Rabbi.